Welcome to the second round of CRT Scaling. My name is Timothy Lottis, and this is the Neo Kino Graphics Channel. Some great news for this holiday season. The RetroTINK 4K has gotten phosphor decay black frame insertion, and Mike is also working on trying energy-conserving scanline algorithms. So speaking of scanline algorithms, let's do a quick talk on an alternative method. The prior talk covered the concept of energy conservation, as a general method for CRT scaling to avoid the darkening effect. There are many methods to build this kind of algorithm. The talks focused on Lattice DVM. Lattice DVM, though, required six dependent texture lookups for the LUT per pixel, and it can be quite expensive. This talk is going to cover a different algorithm that's going to be more ALU bound. I call this algorithm the dual tone map variation. It's a simple idea. For a given phosphor and scanline mask, first compute the energy change i.e. the integral of the mask. How dark does it put the screen at? Then generate two tone mappers. One that would darken the image, we'll apply this to the black part of the mask, and another that'll lighten the image, we apply this to the white part of the mask. And if you're somewhere in between there, you just lerp. The goal is to compute the tone mappers such that the energy in this process is conserved, and therefore you must work in linear. I'm starting here by showing a solution to the tone mappers. In this case, we have our transfer function. X is going to be like the color, going from 0 to 1. A, the blue one, is the lightening tone mapper. B, the red one, is the darkening tone mapper. The mask in this case is set to 1 3rd, so it's a pretty aggressive mask. We can check to see if our tone mapper actually satisfies the mask by doing a simple divide. So we'll take X minus B, or X minus the darkening curve, and we'll divide that by the a, the lightning curve, minus x, i.e. what we're looking at is we're looking at how much do we shift in the darkening divided by how much do we shift in the lightning. In this case, the ratio is constant. You'll see that on the c equals line, which is the orange line, it's a constant one third. Note that the tone mapper here is very efficient to implement. It's just a series of FMAs. Now that you've seen one solution, let's reverse engineer the whole solution space. So the simplest way, if we just look at a darkening curve, would be if we just take the color and raise it to a certain power. You'll notice a problem right off the bat here. At the second power, or just squaring, if we compute the lightning curve from the darkening one, you notice that the lightning curve goes above one. That's not going to work. So we're going to need to come up with a different solution here. Another option is we look at the lightning curve first. The degree of the polynomial is going to control the aggressiveness of the tone mapper. So if we add more terms, we can get more aggressive in the asymptotic line close to 1. So in this, we're going to look at a polynomial with one less term than the prior solution, and that'll be the, the blue curve. And then we have its first and second derivatives in the black and the orange dotted curve. And then we have the prior solution in the purple dotted curve. And you can see we're a little less aggressive here by dropping a term. Another thing, note that we want all the derivatives, we want them all to be 0 at x equals 1. So for a given degree polynomial, we can easily solve the curve. We just go into Wolfram Alpha, write some equations in here. We have two sets of constraints. We must hit 1, 1 in that end of the tone mapper. So for that, we just set the function equal to 1 when x is equal to 1. In other words, all the terms in our polynomial have to sum to 1. The next set of constraints is our derivatives. All of our derivatives, nth order derivatives, must be 0 at x equals 1. So we just write those out. In this case, we have three unknowns, so we just put in three equations, and we have a solution. Once we have the lightning curve, we can also solve for the darkening curve. Now we're looking at the original curve that I showed a solution for. In this case, we want a solution that varies based on c. C is the, the term we're setting to the mass darkening effect. We can plug the equations into Wolfram Alpha, and it will give us the solution. Their solution is simplified. You'll probably want to expand that and then convert it back into Horner form. You'll notice that different degree polynomials are good for only a limited C range. So based on the mask darkening amount, you'll have to choose a different polynomial. For example, if we use the original equation and we set it to only 0.6 as the amount of darkening, you notice the original equation is too aggressive. For example, when we take the solution to the darkening part of the curve, it's starting to go under 0 in the range of x equals 0 to 1. So that's not going to work. 
we have to make sure that the lowest point of the darkening curve must be at somewhere x equals zero or less than zero. Here's some extra tips. The more aggressive the mask, the darker it gets. The more terms are also going to be needed in the polynomial tone mappers, and thus the higher the ALU cost. Sometimes the more aggressive masks look better. It's very nice looking with the shadow mask, old VGA style. This is actually what I originally used it for. Also note, this isn't strictly guaranteed to be energy preserving, but it is close enough for CRT scaling. Hopefully you guys learned something. Until next time.